Alrighty, welcome to the next part of our Python weather application using uh, model view controller and tkinter. So in this video, I think that we're going to try and uh, wrap up the GUI and perhaps move on to the next project. But um, yeah, let's just focus on the GUI for now. So uh, to recap last video, we set up our project structure, we set up our search bar, and we set up our, our information here you know now that i'm looking back on it i kind of want to change this to a number uh 104 that was pretty much the temperature today um and today we're going to add in the rest down here so our controls for the uh temperature and fahrenheit and celsius and also some details so maybe you know i don't know what the what the wind is right now or the name, you know, is it partly cloudy, sunny? We'll see, we'll see. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So moving right along back here to our view code, I'm actually going to add in another method down here called uh, the very creative name of create frame details. So this will be those details that I mentioned uh, such as current or uh, feels like temperature, wind, you know, stuff like that. So pass it self, and we're going to create self dot frame details, and that is going to be a frame uh, attached to main frame. And let's go ahead and create our variables. So we're going to need a self dot variable. Um, let's see, variable condition string var self dot variable feels like. And if you're wondering how we're going to get all this information, we're going to be using an API that accesses a weather database on the internet introduced in a future video. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not going to come out from magic. Although that would be that would be pretty cool. Self dot. Let's see. Variable wind. It's equal to string var. And here I'm going to change that to wind speed. And you know you you we can change these to literally whatever we want later. But um, let's just go ahead and add this stuff for now. Var wind dir. Okay, wind direction. That's going to be another string var. Okie dokie. So let's go ahead and go down to frame details. So we need to create a bunch of labels, uh, eight labels in total. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say, let's see, label, um, for example, la okay, label condition. And what we're going to do is on one side, we're going to have like the, you know, it's going to say, okay, current condition. And on the other side, it'll be what the condition actually is. So we'll say label condition left side um, is equal to a label self dot main frame or self dot frame details. And the text can be equal to um, current condition, current condition, let's see, label feels like left is equal to label self.frame details. Text for this one can be equal to, let's see, feels like. And why not? We'll put it, we'll put a little colon on it. And okay, label, let's see, when speed left is equal to, let's see, label self dot frame details. And text is equal to um, wind speed uh, 
And finally, label wind direction left is equal to label self dot frame details. And text is equal to, let's see, wind direction. Okay, and down below here, we're going to do the same thing pretty much again. So copy and paste those. But what will change is all these will be, all these will say right. So this is the right hand side. And instead of the text, we'll say the text variable is equal to self dot bar um, bar condition. And down here, text variable is equal to self dot bar feels like. Down here, maybe text dot text variables equal to self dot var wind speed and text variables equal to var wind direction like so okay and now let's let's put them onto our frame so instead of packing them we are going to use the grid manager uh, the grid layout manager so we'll say um, label condition left dot grid and we'll say row is equal to zero, column is also equal to zero. And we're going to give it a pad y is equal to five pixels and a sticky to the west. So basically it'll stick it to the left hand side. It'll give it a left alignment of its column. So it stays on the left hand side. And then we'll do label condition right dot grid row is equal to zero column is equal to one um, pad y is equal to five again and sticky is equal to east because it's on the right hand column we want it to be stuck to um, the right side. And this is preference. You don't have to do the sticky thing if you don't want to, but you know, play around with it. And uh, it's basically going to be kind of boring for the rest of these. So I'm going to, uh, so I'll catch you up when I'm done typing them in. Alrighty, I think I have everything in. So now let's just go ahead and say self dot frame details dot pack, pack that in. And let's make sure we call in our main function self dot create frame details. And fingers crossed it works. And let's see, let's see what could be, let's see what could be going on here. So create frame details. Oh, I know what I did. I added, I didn't finish changing the names here. So one moment. Alrighty, now that I think that I have those all typed out, um, let's go ahead and say self dot frame details dot pack. And up here, we just need to make sure and call that function. So self dot create frame details like so. And let's, let's run it. Fingers crossed that it works. Okay, it's good. And we can't see anything over here for our for the right hand side variables because uh, we haven't given them any values yet, but that's okay for now. So now we can go ahead and add our buttons to the bottom um, for our uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. So up here, we're gonna make one last variable. So self dot uh, variable, um, let's call it units for Fahrenheit or Celsius, and that will be equal to an int var. So up here, we also need to say from tkinter import int var. And I'll just make it easy to keep track. And so down here in our create frame controls, we'll say self dot 
uh, frame controls is equal to a frame attached to self main frame. And in this frame, we're simply going to have two radio buttons. So we'll have a uh, radio, oops, radio uh, Fahrenheit, or I'm just gonna call it radio F. Um, or you know what, I'll type in the whole thing. Okay, radio, yeah, radio F. Not too long to type Fahrenheit. Radio F is equal to radio button, self.framecontrols, um, let's, let's, uh, let's type that correctly, shall we? Self.frame controls. And its text is going to say Fahrenheit. And we just need to say text Fahrenheit. And the variable, it's not a text variable this time. We're just going to say variable is equal to um, variable int or var. Uh, var units, self dot var units, I should say, var units, and this value will have the value of one, and we'll add a command to it later. So basically, what this does is this value, this um, this button has a value of one, and when it is clicked, um, it's the value of variable will be set to one. And the way this is cool is because if we have radio. Uh, C for Celsius, and that's also a radio button. Doesn't have to be on frame controls, but for us it will be. And if its text says Celsius, and it has this, it uses the same variable of variable units, then we, then when Celsius is clicked, we can give a value of say two. Now these values don't have to be one and two, but I think it just makes sense, you know, order them right in a row like so. And we'll also add a command to it later so it'll update the GUI appropriately. So now we just have to pack these in. So let's say um, radio f dot pack um, to self dot frame controls. Um, side is equal to left and pad x we'll give it a 7.5 why not okay and a pad y of 5 and then pretty much rinse and repeat here for radio c of self.frame controls um, side this time is equal to right pad x 7.5 so that's a total padding between them of 7 point um that's a total padding between them of uh, 15 duh can't, can't add pad x um can be equal to 5 again or pad y i should say pad y can be equal to 5 again and then at the bottom here self dot frame controls dot and yes, okay. So now let's just go ahead and up here, we'll call that method self dot create frame controls. And if we go ahead and test that out, we need to make sure that we spell our functions correctly. And uh, I just realized a silly mistake I made. Uh, since we already specified self.frame controls up here, we don't need to specify it down here in the pack function, which is what gave me the error down below. So if we go ahead and run that now, all right, so there, we can see everything in. Um, you know, it doesn't really look pretty yet, but uh, we can go ahead and fix that up in a future video. So one more thing before I end this video off is up here in the last video in uh, create frame info and create frame search bar, I added these combo searches, button search, and all these labels to the, as, uh, as attributes in the object. And 
You know, it doesn't really matter if they are if they are or not. But I'm going to go ahead and make them not because generally you the if we say self dot labeled if we create it as self dot label temp then that means anybody from outside our view can have access to it and that's not necessarily something that we also that we always want to do and the reason why this is okay is we'll still be able to access the value so the text value associated with this label for example because of our text variable so that allows um, basically our label to stay private and just its text value to be changeable from the outside. So, you know, in our little app here, we're the, if we're the only developer, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if we were writing a bigger app for say a company or something, uh, we would want that level of privacy, but do make sure that your frames do stay public so they can be accessed up here. Um, alrighty. So that's going to wrap it up for, uh, this part of the tutorial. And in the next part, we'll go ahead and uh, start writing our controller to update our GUI.